Well, it is Sunday and I am in the office. It's a busy week, as always, for our law firm, both in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Put out a blog article regarding the ongoing situation with the Kansas City Chief Wide Receiver, Rashi Rice. Now, Mr. Rice has been charged. He, he did turn himself in. And I did a previous article on it regarding the common mistakes and the common problems with leaving the scene of an accident. And I did a follow-up blog, which I just put up on the website regarding how Pennsylvania and New Jersey would handle Mrs. Rice, Mr. Rice's situation. Now, he's being charged in Dallas, Texas. And I know that our firm is not licensed in Texas, but quite honestly, if he was charged in Pennsylvania or New Jersey, where our firm does practice, he'd be looking at the same charges. And really, the gravity offense has to do with several factors. Uh, one, whether or not the person uh, left the scene of an accident, which he obviously did. And um, again, he's at this point, it's my understanding, through his attorney, has made admissions. And while they're not necessarily admissible, it seems likely that, that his case is going to end up in a non trial disposition. Now, I don't know if his attorney has already worked something out with the prosecution. I said it earlier, but I don't know why the attorney would simply come out and simply make that statement. Now, I know there's been reporters who have said, well, he's taken responsibility and, 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 and that's the right thing to do. And I can understand that from a non-legal standpoint. But obviously, from a legal standpoint, and if I was defending Mr. Wright right now, I would not be making any statements. I would simply offer no comment, and I would dive into the discovery. And at some point, there would come a time where we possibly would, would be negotiating a non disposition in the form of a plea. And when it comes to pleas, we're looking at several things with regards to prior criminal history, which I believe Mr. Rice does not have any, any anything significant. And obviously the sentencing guidelines for the particular offense. Now, in this particular case, there's no evidence that he was intoxicated. And, and, and I know that reporters, and especially one reporter who's not necessarily a reporter, he's more of a commentator, Mike Florida, who's also an attorney, has made several comments about the case and, and how, how he's taken responsibility and I don't know if Mr. Florio is looking at it like an attorney, but that's in, in my opinion, really that's not what an attorney should be doing. And I've stated that in my previous videos and in my blogs. So in terms of defending Mr. Rice, Mr. Rice, again, we're looking at several factors, sentencing guidelines and, and, and what he's been charged with. Now in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, if a person is seriously injured, that will really dictate the, the grading of the offense versus bodily injury versus serious bodily injury, and obviously death, then we get into obviously the, the, the highest degree of, of criminality and subjects a person to possible mandatory sentences and things of that nature. Now, in this particular case, no one has been killed, fortunately, for Mr. Rice, and we're deal we are dealing with injuries. Now, obviously, there's a civil part of this, which is going to be sorted out eventually, and that where most people know the, the burden of proof in a civil courtroom is much lower than one in a criminal courtroom, but it does factor in. I can tell you that a guilty plea in a criminal court would almost guarantee a, 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 civil, a civil decision as well, given the fact that a burden of proof is higher in a criminal courtroom. But it appears that he's gonna be charged with leaving the scene of an accident, uh, assault by auto or, or aggravated assault uh, by automobile. I know that Mr. Florio had said, well, I don't know how the prosecution is going to establish that, but I think what he failed to realize and, 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 and had he researched more into the law, which he obviously did not, he'd know that recklessness can establish an aggravated assault. It doesn't have to be intentional, uh, Mr. Florio. And, and really, that's really just in the statute right in the first few words. It's not that hard to establish assault by auto or aggravated assault by auto, because in most situations with that charge, we're not dealing with intentionality, we're dealing with recklessness, a, 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 a high degree of recklessness. And if the prosecution can establish that, you can get your aggravated assault charge. Now, that being said, that's one of the charges where, where potentially uh, I can see the prosecution negotiating. And again, Mr. Florida pointed out, well, why should the prosecution negotiate? Well, there's several reasons why. The person is pleading guilty. They, they, are, sa they are saving the state 
time and resources. And that's really a good reason why uh, the prosecution would enter into plea negotiations. And it's not just because Mr. Wright is a NFL player. That's very common. 95% of cases end up in pleas, and those can be negotiated pleas or open pleas. And with regards to Mr. Rice, if him and the defense team cannot establish just a, a, a solid plea, there's a strong likelihood that he would plead open, and his sentencing guidelines are probably low uh, compared to someone who has a criminal history. Uh, with regards to possible negotiations, I don't believe Mr. Rice is going to serve time in jail. I think he's going to receive a, a substantial sentence in the form of possibly some form of house arrest, potentially. Uh, but again, uh, I believe the sentencing guidelines, unless there's a mandatory minimum, which I don't believe there is, I don't believe he's going to do any jail time. Now, what will the NFL do? I really can't comment on that. How many games he'll he'll be suspended. It's not my area. So I'm going to stay in my lane with regards to that. But I believe that if his attorney had really come out already and said that Mr. Rice is going to accept responsibility, I believe that he's probably already worked something out with the prosecution whereby he's going to end up pleading guilty to something, receive a substantial amount of probation, community service, some form of maybe house arrest, um, and that's going to be it. Now, I know that people say, well, people were injured. We, we really don't know the, the degree of injury. And also, it's important to understand that in these cases, the victim's, uh, the, the, the victim's position on the case has a lot of weight. And I can tell you that given the fact that there's a likely civil settlement, that will come into play, especially if Mr. Rice's attorneys in a roundabout way can kind of imply, and again, they have, they're going to walk a fine line here, but I believe that they can walk it without overstepping. And they know that if the criminal case works out, there's less likelihood they're going to have an uphill battle with regards to a civil settlement. So that all, and again, it's walking a line between obviously potentially having some type of witness intimidation or some type of negative influence on the witness. But again, you can walk that line and stay within the rules. So these are all factors that are going to be considered. Uh, Mr. Rice's attorney does not appear to be a criminal lawyer as far as his primary area of practice, but he's a state senator, probably has a lot of connections in the state and probably knows a lot of plaintiff's attorneys, probably knows the one who's representing the victims in this case. And they've probably had that off the record conversation. And again, I'm walking a fine line here, but I understand that these conversations do go on. Uh, so again, that's how I think the case is going to work out. In the article, I detail how Pennsylvania and New Jersey would deal with the situation with regards to charges. But if you have questions, 215-755-9000 in Pennsylvania, 856-793-7429 in New Jersey, the website gambleandlaw.com. As always, a tremendous resource for you and your family. All of my books, my blogs, my videos are available there. In addition, you can sign up for our weekly update because we have over 4,000 of, of our current and former clients in Pennsylvania, New Jersey. It's a fantastic resource that our clients and our former clients and our current clients get each and every Friday. No other law firm in Philadelphia has had a has had a newsletter running this long. I've had it running for over a decade. Each and every Friday, I think we've only missed maybe one or two Fridays in the last 10 years. And I think I was deathly ill when we did that. But again, if you have questions, 215-755-9000 in Pennsylvania, 856-793-7429 in New Jersey. Have a great Sunday. Sunday. It is beautiful. I'm stuck in my office, but you have a great Sunday and I'll talk to you all very soon.